Hi, I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And welcome for another Research Friday. Today we're going to talk about stress fractures. Something that, to be honest, I don't like talking about. No, it's a difficult concept or, or even a, I guess the concept's not difficult, but the actual management is difficult. It's, so. it's very difficult because most of the time the people who have the stress fractures, they're runners. Yes. And running is their high. It what keeps them sane, yeah. so trying to get them to calm down is um, sometimes a little hard. Yeah, it is. There, there's some pretty effective ways you can evaluate a stress fracture. Okay. Um, there are some things that you can do to look at the risk of stress fracture in the hip, um, mm -hmm. down in the mm -hmm. leg. We talked about that in one research Friday. It was the tuning fork with the addition of the stethoscope. Yes, and, 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 and I've actually done that a couple of times since then and have found a couple stress fractures. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, it does work, there's some validity behind it um, and, and increasing that prognostic factor. So when we look at actual stress fractures, mm -hmm. where do we typically see the most common of stress fractures? Honestly, the most common is in uh, your metatarsals or your bones of your feet. Okay. Your tarsals. Um, and the most common is the tibia, the big bone in front. All right. That's where you're going to see it the most. Uh, the kneecap, it's hard to assess. It's kind of yeah. difficult, even though you can have it. And then one, I had one of my um, runners a little while ago, and I thought she had a pelvis stress fracture. I've seen two of those cases. Those are, that was just hard to try to yeah. figure out. Absolutely. So most common is in the front, just like All you right. think. So tibia. Tib. And then you're typically talking, like you said, down in metatarsals. Down in the feet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And those are the most common we see. And like you said, we typically see them in runners. Yeah, absolutely. So now that it's getting pretty warm out, everybody's out and about and starting to run. Especially when you got all your tri triathlons starting to start and come yeah. up. Absolutely. Yeah, and so we're going to see this uh, more often come through. Mm -hmm. You'll see this come through your office. Mm -hmm. and, and they'll present like a strain sprain. Yeah, it'll be but, pain in the front part of their leg, yeah. hurts when they run, yeah. eases up when they stop. Or it presents like plantar fasciitis. Yeah, pain in the bottom of the yeah. foot. It's or like a high it's, groin strain. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And so what is kind of the guideline? How do you manage these? What's the, what's the, what's the approach? <sighs> the biggest, the, the, what I've always done is, the first thing is, is that if you've got one of those long distance runners, You've, you've, they've got to back down a little bit. You know, the first phase is uh, most of the time it's through medical management, it's through yeah. um, anti-inflammatories, you've got your uh, minimal impact, like mm -hmm. avoid running. Okay. I've, I've put them in pools before, All right. just light, easy, just to take yeah. the stress off. Um, and, you know, most it's just uh, over-the-counter meds. Okay, and, and what is the most effective way, I mean really, when we think stress fracture, we think, oh no, I better image this. Yeah, no. Okay. No. One of the, one of the best... X-ray, is it going to show it? You know, it's a great question, and that's what, when we teach our CEs, that's the first question we get. Um, no, it's not. X-ray will not show it unless it's starting to actually go like break the periosteal layer and go into that the bone. Cortical thickening. The I'm cortical not a radiologist, thickening. but that's what it sounds like. Yeah, and that's hard to see. I mean, yeah. unless you're unless it's really been there a long time. Uh, actually, yeah. gold standards MRI. So the question is, do we MRI all patients uh, for no. stress fractures? So how do we? No. You know, so what are some effective ways we can sit that patient down and say, there's a likelihood you have a stress pathology, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But guidelines indicate we don't need to image it yet. How do we? I mean, there's ways to address that, right, with patients? Absolutely, there is. How I do it is I sit them down, I'm like, it, it, you know, from everything you're telling me, you're not responding to conservative care. That's the big thing, yep. is if they're not responding to conservative care, you pull your good old-fashioned stethoscope up in your tuning fork, you get a change in that sound, more than likely they have a stress fracture. Okay. Um, and so that's when you just have to discuss that with them. I think this may be a stress fracture. You know, a fracture, I've got to get you over to my orthopedic or my podiatrist, yeah. a friend that I work with, um, and they can manage it more from a medical point of view. And if they choose not to do that, then you have to talk to them about stop running, get off, don't keep pounding it. Yeah. Um, 
because when you start to look at how many how many weeks have you found that it usually takes through the literature to heal and that? Some of these take a couple weeks. I mean, you're up to almost 12 weeks, depending yeah. upon where the, the fracture is. And, mm -hmm. and the challenge is you yep. do imaging, and you have to ask yourself, now that we do show a positive stress pathology or stress mm -hmm. fracture, what's the recommendation? And the recommendation is exactly what you just said. It's time off. Yep. It's taking a little bit of a break. So there's two things we can look at. Return to play. Yep. And how would you be able to rehab this? Exactly. And there's like two phases you can rehab this. Okay. Right? Okay. Yep. And so phase one, you mentioned it. You can go in with your, your the medical side, the family physician side, yep. get some oral analgesics. Um, your, your typical NSAIDs are good in the early yep. stage. Yep. Um, as that's what the guidelines continue to show. Mm -hmm. You have to decrease your activity a little bit or at least decre decrease the impact yes. uh, that's taking place. And then a traditional physical therapy uh, yep. program yep. is beneficial in phase one. The most difficult part of phase one is avoid running. Yes. You tell a runner to avoid running, they're not going to do it. No. And that's a difficult no. thing is helping them no. understand mm -hmm. the time off. Phase mm -hmm. two you can be a little bit more active once they're pain free. Then yep. you can spend 10 to 14 days looking at, okay, we know there's a pain free zone. Mm -hmm. Now we can take you through a little bit more rehab. Now we're gonna do our endurance training yep. or our muscle retraining. Yep. Now we're gonna focus a little bit more on what we talked about in prior Research Fridays, the core, the pelvis, yes. and stabilizing and strengthening that area. Yes. And then if you're good at it or you have a great reference in town, you do some gait retraining. That, that's what I've found the biggest thing, is that if we really look at it, everybody just thinks running, you just go out and you run. Yeah. No, if you look at the, the best runners in the world, they have great form. Yeah. And just like you just, like I tell some of my people who lift weights, you just don't go grab a bar and try to just do a snatch yeah. above your head. There's so many points to that. You actually need to be trained on how to run correctly. It takes three to six weeks for that rehab program technically. Not bad. So when you look at, just kind of in summary, what is the return to play with stress fractures? <laughs> if we really look at by location. Okay. So if we look, if we look at by location, let's start with the, the least is pelvis. Yeah. Okay. Pelvis is about seven to 12 weeks. Okay. That's a, yep. It, I mean, long it's, time. It, it's a long time, yeah. but yet when you start to look at a pelvis, if it fractures, yeah. You're looking at major surgery, which is even longer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then sacrum is about the same. Okay. Seven uh, the to big, twelve. Big bone yeah. in the leg, about four to eight. Okay. And people are like, why? It has a lot of blood flow. Yeah. A lot of blood flow. Uh, the tibia, the one okay. that is most the most common. common, six to twelve weeks. Six to twelve weeks, and that's pretty much no running activity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they usually boot you and do all yeah. the other things, but you can still do other things. And then the, the bones in the feet, you're looking at four to six. Okay, a little bit shorter time. A little bit shorter. Quicker healing. And now the biggest challenge with that is, as we wrap things up here is, okay, we went through time off. Yep. And a lot of patients, <laughs> hey, I took the time off, mm -hmm. I went back to my mm -hmm. activity, and I have mm -hmm. the same symptoms. That's yes. because they're missing an important piece. Yep. And that piece that they're missing is the progression back into activity. Yes. They kind of have this, yes. this runner's rule of 10%. Yep. And yep. really what that means is if you have a runner who's had stress fractures and now they're trying to recover, you went through that 6 to 12, 4 mm -hmm. to 6, time week off, and they're recovering, you take them at 30% of their normal routine. So, so pre-injury. Yeah, so a mile. Let's just say a mile All for right. easy reference. Yeah, so if your pre-injury distance was a mile, mm -hmm. I'm going to take and have you run 30 to 40% of that. Yep. Right? I'm not great with math and small percentages. Yeah, a little less than a half mile. A little bit less than half a mile. You're going to run that half mile mm -hmm. for a week. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to increase it by 10% mm -hmm. the next week. Mm -hmm. Or the next month, depending mm -hmm. upon the severity of it. Yes. So can you imagine how long it actually takes for them to get back to their full potential? And, it's and going to take a while. It does take a while. When I have that discussion, I'm like, would you rather be running or have no running and a complete fracture of your bone? Which would you prefer? Yeah. yeah. And they love the honesty, and they're like, okay, Doc, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So that runner's 10% is an important piece mm -hmm. after the time off period yes. of stress fractures. Yes, absolutely. 30 to 40% of their pre-injury level and then increase it by 10%, and that will allow them to decrease the risk of yep. 
adding on to the stress fracture or re-injury. Re-injury. Right. Absolutely. So, great article. I love this article. Good reference. Good article. Good prescription to use with people with stress fractures. Mm -hmm. um, once again, you can check the article down at the link below. Absolutely. I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. We'll see you next Friday. See you next Friday.